great to be back. Thank you for the opportunity to, to be away last weekend to join my grandmother-in-law for her 95th birthday party. And she was in very good health. It was wonderful to be with family and to, uh, to have that time together. Just a couple of very brief announcements. Today, following worship, is the semi-annual meeting, which will have the feel much more like a semi-annual check-in. Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, business to be conducted today. Just more of an update for you. So we will uh, proceed into that right after worship. If you're not planning to stay for that, you are welcome to depart at that time. And uh, congratulations to Brianne Bader and Trevor Larson uh, as they were married yesterday. So a day of a celebration for the Bader and Larson families. Please keep them in your prayers as they begin this new journey together. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, I invite you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have 
have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. Gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. from Isaiah chapter 55. Call everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Our psalm comes from Psalm 145 and will be read responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them the food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you, and you hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there and boats to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, 
This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew told us in the first chapter of his Gospel that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And for the one who made the world out of nothing and created light from darkness, multiplying some food and loaves, would have not been any major task. Now Jesus wasn't the only one living in the first century that people claimed was working wonders. Nor was he the only one people hailed as Messiah. He wasn't even the only one to claim to be the Son of God. Most of the Roman Caesars did that as well. Neither Jesus nor his early followers imagined that stories about these wondrous acts would convince people of Jesus' divine origins. They were common, and that's something we don't always think about. But instead, the wonders that Jesus performed were always signs of the character of the God whose presence Jesus bears. And that is the difference. Wonders that Jesus performed were always signs of the character of God. And so the point here isn't so much what Jesus does, but why. Because the character of the God that Jesus reveals and represents is captured in a single word at the beginning, compassion. Matthew says that when Jesus saw the great crowd that he had that had followed him, he had compassion on them. And so he healed their sick, he tended to their needs, and shared with them his presence. And then when evening came and they found themselves without food, he fed them. Now before going further into the story, remember what's going on at the beginning of all this. It begins with the line, now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The thing that Jesus had just heard was about John the Baptist's murder by King Herod at a feast. The combination of these, these two events is powerful. In one moment, Matthew invites us to focus on the extravagance, the decadence, and the, the ruthlessness of Herod. And in the next, fastens our attention on a scene portraying the poor, the sick, and the hungry crowds looking for relief. It's like switching TV channels. Matthew is indicating by these contrasting scenes just what kind of God Jesus represents. In the first century, gods aren't normally God's lowercase g, God's aren't normally supposed to care about people like the crowds. The gods of the ancient philosophers were considered disaffected or dispassionate, and so were regularly referred to names like the unmoved mover. At the other end of the spectrum, the gods of the Greek and Roman empires were notorious for using humans as playthings or pawns. 
for ordering the world to do their whims. At best, the gods were supposed to take the side of the rich and the powerful to stand with people like Herod and his well-fed party guests, condoning their exploitation of the poor and even the bloody murder of a truth-teller like John. They were definitely not known for siding with the oppressed, the ordinary, the downtrodden, or the hungry. And yet that's what happens here as Jesus renews, embodies, and fulfills the consistent call of the God of Israel to feed the hungry. And make no mistake, that was no minor endeavor. That's what we now call food scarcity in today's world. It wasn't only known in the ancient world, it was rampant. And so the disciples' suggestion that these crowds of people go and buy food isn't just re unrealistic. They are in a deserted place, after all. But it's also ridiculous, and even a little insulting, because the folks making up these crowds probably didn't have the money to buy food in the first place. And so Jesus tells his disciples to get over their self-concern and feed them themselves. Jesus uses the disciples, even when they would rather look after themselves, to tend to the needs of these thousands of men, women, and children, using words and actions foreshadowing the Lord's Supper. Matthew depicts what happens when you move from a worldview of scarcity, such as, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish to one of abundance. Thank you, God, for these five loaves and two fish. Whatever their initial skepticism or doubt or preoccupation the disciples were caught up in, the words of Jesus, the words of abundance and gratitude are distributed. joy of the fact that all ate and were filled. God used even these reluctant disciples to care for the poor and hungry that God loves so much. The real wonder of the story is that it continues. God still cares deeply and passionately for those who are most vulnerable. And God continues to use us to care for them. As we receive Christ's body and blood this day in Holy Communion, remember that we are being fed by God's heavenly food to be strengthened to go forth from this place, sharing God's love with all we meet, and especially with those with the deepest need. Because that is what our God is like. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you're able as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found printed on the insert in the few back in front of you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, you take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the, the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to all those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another. To be a blessing to others, let us pray our offertory prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us with these gifts that we may proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This banquet of God's grace is for all God's children. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. You may communicate. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And if you are planning to stay for the semi-annual meeting, you may be seated at this time. strange year. Very strange year. And I don't think any of us are going to be necessarily especially sad to see 2021 click over on, uh, on Times Square this upcoming year. But there have been some wonderful things that have been happening in 2020 regardless. Even though our lives have been disrupted, to say the least, in quite a few ways, we have seen a lot of 
responsibility and a lot of wonderful leadership here within our congregation that we uh, are incredibly blessed to be a part of. Thank you to Jim and to all of our council members. Uh, thank you to the reopening committee and subcommittee for the tremendous amount of work and planning and preparation done to help safeguard our health as we resume worship. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been joining us online and the flexibility of, of learning to live our Christian faith and express our Christian faith in a different way compared to uh, mid-March when it was the last time that we were all together here in worship. Uh, thank you to all, uh, to everyone who has postponed or had to, uh, in a very difficult way, delay conversations or uh, celebrations, milestones, and funerals. Um, it has, it's always a pleasure to join people in the midst of both the joys and the grief that we might face in life uh, that has been compounded by, by what we have experienced in the world around us. So thank you for your, your patience and your flexibility for, for all of these things. Uh, looking forward, there's still a fair amount of uncertainty exactly when the pews are going to be full again. I know that's something that a lot of us might have in mind, especially this morning. I made the comments of Beth, it was about eight minutes till. And I said, where on earth is everyone? There was nobody here. It was Beth and me. And, and uh, I heard Luanne, but, um, but that was about it. So it, it might be some time. And that's okay. I want everyone to know that I completely respect the decision to not be fully involved in corporate worship again at this time. I am grateful that we are able to join together for those of us who are ready. And uh, please know that for all else who are not ready to return yet, we will continue with the online worship services for the foreseeable future. That's another thing that came out of uh, this difficult time. We didn't have an online worship service presence in the past. There was no reason we didn't, but now we do. And thanks to COVID-19 for that, I guess. We didn't have a YouTube channel. We didn't have online giving capabilities prior to all of this. There was no reason. We just didn't. Thanks to COVID-19, now we do. And those are tools that we can use long into the future. So going back to the initial statement of there are a number of good things that have, uh, that have taken place in the midst of all this. Those are a few of those examples as well. But yes, there is a, there is a fair amount of uncertainty looking at the fall with uh, when we traditionally have Rally Sunday and resuming Sunday school. Um, those conversations have not yet taken place regarding what that might look like. We're waiting for the school district to come out with some guidance. Um, that has been an incredibly difficult decision on their, on their behalf. So we're, we're waiting for a little bit of, of clarity from the school district prior to us deciding what that might look like in our setting here. So bear with us. Bear with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in the midst of all of this with us, even when it might be a little questionable whether he is or not. But we are being led as God's people in a creative sense to continue the mission and ministry of Christ through this congregation. We are all integral in, uh, in making that happen. So thank you. Thank you so very much as your pastor for your uh, commitment to this mission and ministry because nothing will ever take away from, from this work that has been entrusted to us.
Actually, even without that, we've been doing very well. Um, and I want to commend all of our members for keeping up with their financial commitments during this hard times. Um, now we have a bit of bad news. Uh, the air conditioner has went out on us. So um, with that, I'll call Craig up. He's, he's been working on coming up with uh, a plan for that. So I'll let him fill us in. Um, so at our last council meeting, we decided to um, talk with an engineer about the situation we have here in our fellowship area and the fellowship hall. And so I met with uh, Mike Roquet from Lotus Engineering um, here a few weeks ago, and we've kind of come up with a plan. Um, the plan is going to have basically three bid parts for the contractors. So. Our plan is to kind of bid out um, sanctuary as one unit, um, the fellowship as one unit, and then kind of a, an additional um, heating and cooling needs where we maybe should be. Um, currently, we're a little undersized on cooling for our sanctuary. Um, that's very hard to change because all our ductwork currently is under the floor. So unless we want to tear that floor up and redo that, it's a little harder to do. Or if we want to put some sort of ductwork in our sanctuary, uh, which I don't think any of you like. So we've came up with kind of three different options there um, for the council to look at at our next meeting. And so um, with that, there's not a whole lot else, um, but it's out for bid right now, and we should have all those bids back at our next council meeting. Decision, um, and hopefully, obviously, I said three different bids. Each one of those is probably more money, obviously. Um, so that's kind of where we're at today. Any questions? I guess. Is just the air conditioning. Are we looking at like heating? So I meant to say that. So we're looking at heating and cooling. So we have currently for the sanctuary, we have two furnaces and one air conditioner. For the fellowship area we have, and I should say the, all the old part maybe of the area, we have two furnaces and one air conditioner. So we're looking at possibly four furnaces and two air conditioners or some, um, depending on what one we might go with, maybe two furnaces and one air conditioner. So um, it's kind of being bit those different steps maybe. The current uh, air conditioner and furnace is the best I can tell. I think they were put in two years apart. I think one was put in in 92 and the other was put in in 94. Um, unless for somehow we bought them in the name, I, I'm not exactly sure, but that's what I can kind of tell, which is we've got good use out of those units. So um, if you can get anything more than 20 years out of a unit, we're doing good. So um, they've lasted a long time. Thanks, Craig. Um, obviously, after the council um, talks about this, it kind of decides which bid we want to go with. We'll be coming back. We'll have to have a congregational meeting to amend the budget and you know get final approval. We're not just going to do it at the council. 